I come from a military family, so when I was growing up, I said, I have to go in the military. And my mother knew that. So she signed for me to join. And all my other brothers um, and father was in the other branches of the service, the Navy, the Army, the Air Force, and everything else. And the only one left was the Marine Corps. So I went in the Marine Corps. And uh, that was in November uh, 1st, 1953. I was 16 years old. I flew two missions before I got shot down. I was helping to bring in supplies to uh, an air base, and one of the times when we came in uh, bringing in supplies, uh, we got hit by a rocket, and there was a lot of injuries on board. The commander of the unit, he cited me for a Bronze Star, which I, which I received for that. And of course, uh, Purple Heart, because of the flag. Now, I did get shot down later on, and, um, and I got hit in the knee by shrapnel. So actually, uh, I've been wounded twice. The city of Port St. Lucie is honored to recognize the sacrifices our Purple Heart recipients have made in defending our freedoms and believes that it is important to acknowledge their courage and to show them the support they have earned. Now therefore, Joanne M. Paella, mayor of the city of Port St. Lucie, Florida, does hereby proclaim that Port St. Lucie is a Purple Heart City. I have spent so many years in the service and lost all my friends in the service over all of the wars. I've been in Korea and Vietnam both. Um, I find that my uh, uh, contribution to this military service is, is quite insignificant compared to them. So it makes me feel very humble, I guess is the best word. Uh, very honored, uh, and, uh, but humble. Gerard Lynn, I want to thank you for all the help you've given the city, the city in reference to putting this list together. And of course, we know you're the famous artist, so I want you to be recognized for that. Thank you very much. When I got out of the Marine Corps, um, back in 1958, October 58, when I got out of the the first time, I had to do something. Being as in the military, I was primarily in military intelligence. There isn't too many opportunities in the, out of the military for work of that nature. So I decided that I would try my hand in art because I always liked to draw when I was a kid. And I did a little bit of art in the service as a, just as something to do. So we moved to Minneapolis, St. Paul area. I got a job there, a couple of uh, publishing companies. Finally opened up my own studio and I made connections with Paramount. And so I did posters for Paramount Pictures because they had an office in Minneapolis at that time. During this time when I was looking for work, just like every so-called starving artist, I went to Brown and Bigelow to get extra work and I found out that they were doing uh, pinup calendars. Well, I met one of their, at the time, was one of their leading uh, pinup artists, uh, Gillette Elfman. He took me under his wing, and of course I loved his work, so I emulated him in my painting, and he helped me a great deal. He is considered the uh, premier pinup artist of the world. For the classic vintage pinup, we try to emulate the person who has the perfect proportion, the idealistic proportions, the shape of the face, the oval, the eyes large, the mouth full, upper lip, lower lip, uh, the nose straight. The only two really that I feel beautiful women in the world that fit all of those aspects or characteristics, I should say, is Elizabeth Taylor and Hedy Lamarr. Those are the only two. The rest, they're good looking, they're pretty and all that, but they're not beautiful in that sense. He had his secretary call me and ask me if I would do an informal portrait. There's only three paintings that I've ever done that I feel were good. And one was my commission portrait of President Reagan. I think I captured him the way he wanted. My classical paintings, I have two paintings that I feel I did very, very well at. One was a recent one, The Baroness, which I had just completed, and one I did several years ago and it's called the Le Ravishment de l'Amour, uh, the Rapture of Love. Of my pinups, I have not reached one yet that I'm totally satisfied with. Close, but not in a scale of one to 10, maybe I have a couple of eights. I'm very critical. 
And I, that's another thing that I learned from uh, Mr. Elgren, who's my mentor. He said, Jerry, never be satisfied. Always strive for better. And so I say, the next time, I'll, maybe I'll get it right. And it's very much like uh, our, uh, my military career. You know, uh, I've been around the world four times, and I've been in, you know, conflicts and everything else. And we've, we've all, all of us uh, ex-servicemen have made mistakes in our lives. We wish we could go back and change, but we can't. And we, we only hope and pray that someday we'll be able to atone for our mistakes. And also, life will teach us a lesson that uh, others will learn by.